Good morning, church family. It is wonderful to see you this morning. I'm so glad that you're here. Whew, it's good to worship Jesus together, isn't it? I'm gonna invite you to stand where you're at at the moment and just finish up your conversations. Oh, and we're gonna focus our gaze on Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We love you. We welcome your presence here. You know, it says in the Bible that we enter His courts with thanksgiving. And I wanna just encourage you this morning to just start with thankfulness in your heart. So let's just start, just close your eyes where you're at. Just lift up your hands if you'd like to. And just think about the week that you've had this past week. There may have been some challenges, but I'm gonna invite you in this moment just to think of something that you are grateful to the Father for. Just remember something in this moment. Just lift up our gaze, Lord, and just start speaking out to the Father what you're thankful to Him for. Father, thank You for Your kindness towards each one of us. Just start speaking it out to Him. I'll speak mine out. Father, I thank You for Your provision. Father, I thank You for times of rest in Your presence, Lord. Father, I thank You for friendship. Father, I thank You for my family, for my husband. Lord, I'm so grateful. Father, I thank You for my church family. Lord, thank You that You've set me in a family, Lord. Thank You for Your mercies that are new every morning, Holy Spirit. Your mercies are new and fresh for us every morning. Jesus, thank You for Your life that You gave willingly on the cross. I just wanna read this. You can stay in that place of thanksgiving. I wanna read this from Romans 12 in the Passion over us. Beloved friends, what should be our proper response to God's marvellous mercies? To surrender yourselves to God, to be His sacred living sacrifices and live in holiness, experiencing all that delights His heart. For this becomes your genuine expression of worship. So let's today just lift up our voices, lift up our hearts. Lord, we, we just declare today, we wanna be living, sac make a living sacrifice to You. We wanna be living sacrifices to You, Holy Spirit. Lord, we surrender our ears to You, our hearing. Open up our ears to hear what You're saying, Lord. We open the eyes of our hearts to see what You're doing. Lord, we tune in to Holy Spirit. Lord, we love You, we worship You, we adore You, Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord today. Lord, we stir up our souls and we declare that You are good. You are good. You are good. You are good. We love You. We worship You, You're the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and the Omega. Oh, You're so worthy of our adoration and our praise this morning, King Jesus. Lord, it's, you know, we know on this side of heaven, it's when we get to give a sacrifice of praise. When we're in Your presence and the veil is completely removed, it won't be hard at all. But right now we put aside every distraction and we fix our gaze on You because You are totally worth it. Thank You, Jesus. We welcome You, Holy Spirit. Let our praise be pleasing to You today. Let it be a sweet incense to You. Let it rise and be pleasing to You. We love You. We love You. We love You. Whoa, there's plenty of space at the front here. If you need some room to move around, let's go for it, church family.
and wonderful and worthy of our adoration. Oh, just tell Him how much you love Him. Just spend a moment longer adoring Him. Oh, we love you, beautiful one. Beautiful one. No one and nothing compares to you. The pearl of great price. Oh, beautiful Saviour, we welcome your presence amongst us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus, you're worthy. Just stay in this place of worship. I just kept hearing the Holy Spirit say, masks off, masks off, masks off. And I know sometimes we associate masks with safety in an aeroplane, or sometimes it could be masks of, we wanna cover and hide ourselves. And He kept saying for both of those things, I'm not safe, I'm good, but I'm not safe. Masks off, if you want safety, in my presence and with me is not the place to be. <laughs> but also, if you want freedom and wholeness, then you need to take down the walls and take the masks off. So right now, both sides of that coin, whatever you might relate to in any way, I just wanna, Give us a moment to take our masks off. Lord, because you're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. Lord, we want the thrilling and fantastic ride with you, even of life with you, even when you invite us to step into places that take courage and boldness, Lord, whether it's sharing our faith, whether it's going on a missions trip, whether it's loving our neighbour, the closest of which is our spouse. Sometimes that takes a lot of courage. We take our masks off because you're good. You're good. You're good. Lord, where we've been putting up walls of self-protection, we take those masks off right now. We lift them off right now. Thank You that You're our protector. And in You, we don't need to hide who we are because we're loved by You. So we receive Your love in those places that we wanna hide. We receive this, Your love right now and we let our walls down with You. We let go of having to please people, having to perform, having to be a good person, having to be on all the time. We let those masks down and we embrace the vulnerability that You embraced at the cross, Jesus. Thank you, you're good. Just let His love wash over you right now. Holy Spirit, wash over us right now. I just see almost like in this room, He's giving to some like a, a bath. He's bathing and refreshing and binding wounds where you've been hurt. Whether it's by yourself or by others, He's giving a, a bath of His Spirit, the oil, of gladness and healing He's releasing in this room. And I see for others, He's giving like this, a medal of courage, like they give war veterans. And He's saying, there's more, there's, a, there's more for you. And with that, I see Him giving like a, an arrow, a, a bow and arrow. 
It's like He's inviting you to take courage and step out into sometimes what feels unknown, but He's the firm foundation. Lord, we receive whatever it is that You have for us today. Why don't You just hold out Your hands and just say, Holy Spirit, I receive what You have for me today. I receive it. Thank You, Lord. I want us just to stay in this moment, stay where we are. So I recognise that there are people in this room who may not have given their lives to Jesus or those watching online. You may be feeling like you're looking in from the outside. I wanna read this passage from Isaiah 53. In the message, the servant grew up before God, a scrawny seedling, a scrubby plant in a parched field. There was nothing attractive about him. This is talking about Jesus. He's not kind of what he's portrayed in Hollywood movies. Nothing to cause us to take a second look. He was looked down on and passed over. A man who suffered, who knew pain firsthand. One look at him and people turned away. We looked down on him, thought he was scum, but the fact is, it was our pains he carried. Our disfigurements, all the things wrong with us. We thought he brought it on himself, that God was punishing him for his own failures, but it was our sins that did that to him, that ripped and tore and crushed him. Our sins. Whew. He, the Lamb of God who was innocent, took the punishment and that made us whole. Through His bruises, we get healed. We've all like sheep who've wandered, often gotten lost. We've all done our own thing, gone our own way and God has piled all our sins, everything we've done wrong on Him, on Him. He was beaten, He was tortured, but He didn't say a word. Like a lamb taken to be slaughtered and like a sheep being sheared, He took it all in silence. Justice miscarried and He was led off. And did anyone really know what was happening? He died without a thought for his own welfare, beaten bloody for the sins of my people. Still, it's what God had in mind all along to crush him with pain. The plan was that he give himself as an offering for sin so that he'd see life come from it. Life, life and more life. And so today, if you relate to any of that, feeling crushed and abandoned and in pain and a person of sorrows, I want to let you know the good news is that Jesus 2,000 years ago took all of that upon Himself on the cross. He became one with our sin, the bad stuff that we would do. He became one with the bad stuff that was going to be done to us. And He did it all so that we might be made whole. So I wanna take this moment right now. If you've never said yes to Jesus, it's as simple as surrendering your life to Him in this moment. It's as simple as saying, Jesus, I can't do it by myself, I need You. And so I want everyone to close your eyes, stay where you are. Could I invite you to stand as well, please? Could I invite everybody just to stand in this moment? We're gonna pray this prayer together. I wanna give you an opportunity to respond. Oh, great. You don't have to wait till we've prayed. If you wanna come down to the front, you can. <laughs> I love it. 
Let's just keep our focus on Jesus. Jesus, you can pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I've been trying to do it my own, in my own strength. I'm tired. I feel crushed. I feel broken. I'm desperately in need. Or maybe I feel good about myself, but I've never said yes to you and given my life to you. Today, I humble myself and I want to accept your life and wholeness in exchange for my sin and brokenness. I believe you died for me. I believe you were raised again for me. And I believe that you're seated at the right hand of the Father. And I receive your life right now. Holy Spirit, come and fill me. I let go of the old, doing things my own way, and I embrace new life with you. In Jesus' Name. If you prayed that prayer and gave your heart to Jesus, I want to welcome you into the family. I'm going to ask that you would just raise your hand and just show me with a sign of your hand. And I'm going to invite you in this moment to take another step. We have a team over here. Someone's come already, but we have a team over here of people who want to welcome you into the family of God, welcome you into this beautiful journey of transformation with Jesus. And they wanna pray with you and answer any questions you may have. So I'm gonna invite you to come out from your chair, walk down the front. We wanna, we wanna celebrate what the decision that you've made today and celebrate what Jesus has done for you. So this team is over here, so you can come down now if you would like. If you wanna bring a friend with you, you can bring a friend with you. Ask the person next to you if they want you to go down the front with them. Just take this moment. This is the best moment of our meeting. Thank You, Jesus. If you're watching online, I wanna invite you and you gave your life to Jesus or maybe you gave your life back to Jesus. I want you to type it in the chat. We wanna celebrate with you. Thank You, Holy Spirit. Just one more moment, it's never too late. If you feel the nervous tingling in your tummy, sometimes that's an indication. Go, we've all done this before. Thank You, Lord. Thank You, Lord. Thank You, Holy Spirit. Okay, let's just give Jesus some worship and say, thank You, Lord. We thank You. We thank You for Your life. We thank You for the abundant life that we get to live in. Thank You, worship team. Really appreciate You, yes. Okay, why don't you give someone a high five on the way back to your seat. I wanna welcome you. If this is your first time here, a very big welcome to you. <sighs> We're very glad to see you. If you, have, if you need to find out more information or you are just visiting for the first time, we want to, I wanna encourage you to go to the Welcome Centre through the glass doors at the back and meet our team. We have a gift for you. Excellent. Oh, worship team, thank you for that beautiful worship. <sighs> good to be together, isn't it? Well, I'm gonna, we're gonna um, just finish off, wrap off our worship. Well, it's all worship really, but we're gonna receive our tithes, return our tithes and sow offerings to the Lord. As a, it's another part of being a living sacrifice and offering ourselves up as a living sacrifice to Jesus is giving back to Him what actually already is His in the first place. And it's a sacrifice because it just tests where our trust is. And so I wanna invite you, if you're part of this church family, now is the time to return tithes and sow offerings. If you're a visitor, you are welcome to do that, but don't feel under any obligation. On the screen, you can see the different ways to give. I wanna invite you to go on the app, our Church Centre app, or you can go on our website page, or you can do it the old fashioned way through an envelope back at the giving um, desk over there. So thank you so much for being such a generous family. 
I have two announcements. The first one is a very exciting announcement. We have a business seminar that is coming up on uh, in two Saturdays time, not this next Saturday, but the one after, which is the 12th of August. You may have seen it advertised. I just wanna remind you that it's happening. If you think business, oh, I'm not a business person, I want you to rethink that. If you know someone in business and they don't even have to be a follower of Jesus, we have an amazing day. It's a free seminar with a phenomenal man called Mike Frank and his wife, Robbie. Mike has a history of successful business. He's been a high level leader in PepsiCo, in General Mills and other multinational companies in the United States and global really. He's also launched some communications companies and he has a lot of wealth and wisdom in business also in these challenging times that we might find ourselves in. He's got some really great skills on learning how to make decisions and push things forward as a, as a follower of Jesus, but also just as a business leader in this current day and age. So it's a free event. People normally pay big bucks to hear this man speak, but it is open to you free. You can bring your friends. If you know someone who's a business person, please encourage, invite them to come with you and you can click the QR code to find out more information. It's gonna be lots of fun. Okay, from nine to four, five p.m. on Saturday the 12th. And it's, yeah, just, you can find out more at the, at the table, at the Welcome Centre behind. The next announcement is a video. I'd like you to tune into the video and just listen to this, please. So as we were preparing and praying into the conference theme for this year, we really felt the passage out of John where Jesus says, I give you peace. And then He says, I'm sending you into the world and be filled with the Holy Spirit. He breathes on them to go in the power of the Holy Spirit. capture the heart of God, to be sent as Jesus was sent, sent by the Spirit, sent carrying peace, sent with His love. We really need to receive more of the Holy Spirit. We're hungry for more of Him. We are the sent ones. <laughs> that video makes me wanna go. I'll be there. <laughs> we have a really exciting conference coming up. I, we don't wanna do conferences just for the sake of them. There is purpose to this September conference, 28th to 30th. And we feel like there's a real um, opportunity for a fresh, and new impartation to be filled with the Holy Spirit and sent into the world around us to be to do just what Jesus commissioned us to do that meant those many years ago to go into all the world and make disciples of all people groups. Okay, so as our church family, I have a secret. We have a special code for you and it is a very discounted code. So if we would like to make it possible for you to come, so I can't mention it online because then all the world will know it. But if you want to find out what the code is, so you can register, you can click on the QR code or if you want more information, you can go through the glass doors at the back to the Welcome Centre. We have an amazing lineup of guests, of worship leaders and speakers. It is going to be phenomenal. And if you want to get a fresh impartation, I wanna encourage you to come. It is also so exciting because there is no Junior Holy Spirit on the Saturday. We have a kids conference. They are going to get filled up and be sent out in the peace and the love of Jesus as well. If you would like to come just to a day as a church family member, you get also a 50% discount. 
The thing is, you need to register before August 1st. So I wanna encourage you to do that right now or at the end of today, because August 1st is coming up. It's gonna be lots of fun. <laughs> Excellent, well, I'm gonna hand over to my handsome husband, Murray, who's gonna be sharing the word for us today. Excellent. Thanks, Ash. Good afternoon, everybody. It's, uh, it's always such a confidence booster to be called handsome on the stage, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, uh, the first service, she said it's going to be a great message. She hadn't heard it. I said, that's a woman of faith right there. Fantastic. So we are in our um, sermon series on living in joy. And, um, you know, one of the reasons for doing this series is that we know the heart of God and we know who He is and what He's like and we want everybody to know and experience what he's like and to live in his joy and in his delight. And um, you know, so it's our desire that we all, because it's the Father's desire, that we all grow into Christ. And part of growing into Christ is learning to live like Jesus, which was to live in love and joy and peace. And so I'm gonna take some time today to look at what it means to mature in joy or to be whole uh, and look at some of that. But I'm coming off the back of a couple of weeks ago, Mel, she spoke on um, appreciation and the importance of gratitude and thankfulness. And I hope you've been building in some discipline if you haven't already around being more grateful and tuning into the Father's heart for that. Every good and perfect gift, the Bible says, comes from above. Last week, Ash preached on uh, keeping um, the relationship above the problem. And if you didn't get a chance to listen to that or you didn't take notes, I really wanna encourage you to uh, go back through, download Catch the Fire TV app or um, go to our website or our YouTube channel and just listen to that. It was an amazing message with lots of really key ideas and things that are, you know, really, Ash has spent 30 years, 31 years, in, you know, learning those things and putting them into practice. So... I can attest to them. I have the joy of living with her. So today, I wanna to talk to you. My basic message or premise today is that the Father's desire and design is for us to be whole and mature. He's predestined us to be like Jesus. Now our maturity and our wholeness is measured by how much love and joy and peace we live in. So there's the challenge for you right now is how much joy and love and peace do you live in? I wanted to, to start by looking at uh, a psalm that I looked at when, we, when I kicked this off four weeks ago now, and that's uh, Psalm chapter 16. I just wanna read verse 11, because I just wanna, we wanna set the tone, I wanna set the tone right off the bat about the nature of God and who He is. And so verse 11 of, of Psalm 16, it says this, you, speaking of God, make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. There we go up on the screen. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there's fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Did you know that we, many of us here are learning and experiencing and growing in the reality that God is a joyful God? that he is full of joy, he's not grumpy, he's not angry, he's not just like, you know, some, you know, just disconnected person. He is full of joy and is always happy to be with us. He delights in us, he delights in you and he delights in me. He is joyful. He is the architect and the originator of joy. And he is full of joy, not just a little bit of joy, not just a trickle of joy, but it's in His presence, in his, because of it's His very nature, where He is, there is always joy. There's always joy, because God is full of joy, and in His presence, there's fullness of joy. And then at, our right, at His right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. I was just reflecting in worship, you know, the reality for us that, that while, you know, we've, we've, when we said yes to Jesus, we've come into a relationship with Him, one that's, as the, with Him as the joyful one, one where He has now brought us into an eternal relationship of pleasure and joy. 
At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Who wouldn't want that deal? You know, often we think about, you know, um, going to heaven as little sort of cherub angels on harps with white on a white cloud, sort of looking a bit chubby and having, fun, you know, just sort of singing. But there's so much more to the reality of God that we experience now and through to in eternity of His joy and His pleasure and His delight. When God thinks about you and I, I've said this before and I'll hopefully keep saying it all the time till I fully believe it myself, is that when He thinks about you, He smiles. That you are His happy thought, that he, you and I bring Him incredible amounts of joy despite all the things that we can see are our own shortcomings. God is full of joy in His presence, His fullness of joy at His right hand a pleasures forevermore, which is where we will be for all of eternity. If you think there's pleasure in this earth, just wait till you get to heaven. There's so much more that He has for us. But, he, but the Psalmist David, he writes this, he starts with that verse, he says, you make known to me the path of life. And I was, I was reflecting on it, I felt like there were at least two elements to that statement. The first element of God making known to us the path of life is the direction that, the, of the life that He's called us to. Every single one of us, God has, when we've said yes to Jesus, He's brought us into His purpose before the foundation of the world. He created you and I, and He created us for a specific purpose. So God leading us in that path is to lead us into His purpose and His good pleasure in our lives. And we'll come back to that. The second dimension of it is when He's saying that He leads us in the way or the path of, uh, of, of life, it's to actually lead us in the way of life in Him that He knows will work best for us. The best way we can live our lives. It's the, it's, the, it's the path, if you do these things, you're gonna have an amazing life is what I believe David's also talking about that and it's connected to joy and to the pleasures of God. So as I said, the, the, the key theme today is that the Father's desire and design is for each one of us to be whole and mature, which is measured in how much we live in joy and peace and love. And so because of that, it will be true to say that the, one of the primary indicators of our maturity or our wholeness is how quickly we return to joy from every other, from every negative emotion. Do we get stuck in thought patterns and when things don't go our way or when we have a relational breakdown, do we get stuck in anxiety and anguish and anger or fear or any other of, in loneliness or other emotions or are we able to come back to joy and experience His love? The journey, and I've shared this before as well, but the, my own journey has been one of learning to grow from returning to joy. Sometimes I could get, get stuck in negative emotions for days, if not weeks, and I'm learning to return to joy more quickly as I get more mature and I, be, I become more whole in Christ Jesus. And why is that? Why is it joy? Well, if you think about joy, is it carries love. Joy is an expression of love and it also, so, you know, love says that someone's happy to be with us. So we know that God desires and delights in us. So that brings us joy. But then it also, joy carries peace. Not necessarily, you know, uh, you know, sometimes happiness, people can be kind of twirling and dancing and it doesn't feel very peaceful. But on the inside, joy carries a great amount of peace because we know who is with us. So our priority is to learn to return to joy as we pursue wholeness. The good news of salvation is when we, when we said yes to Jesus, we actually became new creations. It means that we've had a fundamental shift in our internal nature. Once we were a slave to sin, but when we said yes to Jesus, we've been set free from sin by the blood of Jesus, by the cross, as Ash just was reading out of Isaiah 53. We've become new creations, we have a new nature, but you wouldn't have to live with me very long to realize 
that what is true of me on the internal realm in the spirit is not yet fully true of me in the way that I relate to people in, my, in the amount of joy and peace that I walk around in, that I carry in whatever circumstance there is. I still get a little anxious. I still get a little worried. Are my needs gonna be met? I still get a little angry. Sometimes maybe a little bit more than I care to, to elaborate on. Sometimes I still feel lonely or I still feel fearful. And, and what the Bible says is that actually what, while we're new creations, what God wants to do is to reshape our thinking, our beliefs and our actions, or as, as Paul says, to be transformed, to change the way that we think and act, which is God's intention, God's desire and God's work in our lives. So the reality for all of us is we've all been shaped by our experience and what we've made it mean. In our house in Raleigh, um, Ash mentioned it last week that we had a bit of a, a situation and a couple of people afterwards you know, came up to us and said, you have a house still in Raleigh, does that mean that you're gonna be leaving? No, that's okay. We just have a few expenses still in the UK, US, so like kids going to university. So we've chosen to, care, to keep a property uh, down there. But in our yard, when we moved into Raleigh, we chopped down a number of trees. One of the trees was under another tree, it was a fir tree, and rather than growing up, it grew at an angle. It just grew sideways, basically. It grew up because trees need sunlight and so it goes to look for sunlight and because there was another tree above it, it didn't grow up, it grew outwards. It was misshapen and kind of going in the wrong direction. We had another cup, so we had to chop that one down. We had another couple of, we had another tree out the front that was I think a river birch that had went at the very base of it, went into three directions and there was a whole bunch of moss and other things, the debris that had been caught that were basically causing the tree to rot, which meant that in a hurricane or a tornado, both of which we would get in North Carolina, that tree could come crashing in over Ash and I's bedroom. So that had to get redone, taken out. That one was diseased and had some issues. The other one didn't get what it needed. And so if you think about that for us, it's like that is a picture of our own lives, what we've experienced, the things that we've been through, and the things that we've made them mean, what we've made them mean have actually shaped the direction of our lives and very often it shaped us away from who God's calling us to be or who God's made us to be. So, you know, it may be that you have, you know, you've experienced bad things in your life and those negative experiences have shaped you in a particular direction. For Ash, it was, you know, her parents getting divorced um, and being separated and then divorced at an early age caused some things, some pain in her life and she made it mean something particular. So one of the things that she made it mean was that men are not trustworthy. Now you could say that's not true, but that, you know, hopefully. Men, are we trustworthy? Most of us, I think, are, aren't we? Godly men are to be trustworthy. But, you know, the, the idea for her was that they weren't trustworthy and therefore it shaped her desire and her in the reality in a, in a way that wasn't very helpful for her. For me, in my own life, growing up, as, going to boarding school when I was five or six, that shaped some, some issues in my own life of actually feeling like, um, you know, I, I had been, you know, I was maybe abandoned or, or a sense of I'm not sure if I fit in or, or I belong. And it wasn't just the experience that I experienced that shaped me. It's the, what I made it believe. It's the, what I made it mean. It's the lies that I, in, in, you know, took on. It's the judgments that I made. It's, the, it's, the, it's those kind of things that I took my, the way I experienced that and internalized it and made it mean something to me that caused me to be misshapen. Caused the direction of my life to not uh, to be all that God's called us to be. So there was the bad things that happened, but the other reality for each one of us is there are also things that we should have got that we didn't get. So you could liken the bad experiences to the, the tree that was growing in three directions and there was rotting that needed to be chopped down. But this second part is the not receiving the things that we should have got. A tree needs sunlight, so it's going to go in the direction to find sunlight. 
It should have grown up straight, but it didn't have the sunlight, so it actually got misshapen. That's the same with you and I. We don't know what we don't have until there are moments where we see what someone else has and then we suddenly realise, oh, I want that. I missed that. I didn't get that. And that might be something like, you know, a, a, a child who, when you were young and you, you, know, you scraped your knee and rather than a mum or a dad comforting you, there was either, either nobody there for you at all or they just brushed it off and said, no, don't be, don't be silly, big boys don't cry or whatever it might have been. And very often they start at an early age, those things get settled as our foundation and those experiences and more importantly, what we make them mean, the lies that we believe, shapes us in a different direction shapes us away from who God has called us to be. And of course, it's reinforced by the world, it's reinforced by common experience, and then there's reinforced by the demonic realm, the demons that wanna just twist the knife in there. And what happens is that we all, that gets internalized into each one of us and in deeply in our being. And when somebody, without realizing it, and when something happens that goes wrong or somebody says something to, to us, we respond in a negative way. We, rest, we respond out of that pain. Ash talked last week about the red buttons. I have some red buttons. Ash sometimes doesn't know about them, but she hits them. <laughs> Unintentionally, you know. She's trying to communicate one thing and I, I know that she's not trying to be unkind to me, but it comes across to me in a way that's been filtered through my past because I've been misshapen and all of a sudden I'm like, ah, what do you mean? Rah! And I go back, I'm sure it's just me. Husbands and wives, you can't relate to this at all. And because of the way I'm designed, you know, or this, not, not that I've been designed, the way that I've been shaped, I should say, at this point, to some degree, I, my response to her will be to justify why I was angry, to accuse her that she shouldn't have done what she just did, and then just withdraw. Not gonna listen to you. And because of the way she experiences me, she's like, that's not how you relate. And so she attacks goes after me and I'm like, no, I'm gonna withdraw even more. Now, gladly, those cycles are becoming less and less, but those red button issues, they affect all of us, don't they? There's all stuff that we've experienced and what happens in that moment is we lose our identity. We lose the understanding of who we are. We lose the understanding of what it is most like me, how it is most like me to act in this situation. I'm loving, I'm kind, I love my wife. It's most like me to operate that way. But in the moment, I lose access to the, that, that idea and I suddenly have my relational circuits turn off and I turn into someone, in a sense, I can operate out of pain and someone that she's like, who is this person? Have you ever experienced that? Maybe it hasn't happened. Maybe you haven't done that, of course, but maybe you've experienced it from someone else. And you're experiencing, whoa, that came out of nowhere. What the heck just happened? That's what's happened. So God's desire is for us to be whole and to know His life and to live in His joy. So let's look at uh, Philippians 2, 12 to 15. Philippians 2, 12 to 15. Um, let me turn to that. Philippians chapter two. Okay, so it says this, therefore my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence. So Paul's basically saying, don't do it because you have to, because I'm on the outside. Do it as an internal motivation for, for, for your own sake. And then he says this, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling for it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without grumbling or disputing that you, or complaining that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Our testimony, our witness and our ability to not grumble or to be angry or to just kind of live in the level of pain is actually is a witness to others and it requires us to work out what God is working in. So Paul says, work out your salvation. Doesn't say to work for. Yours and my salvation is already settled 
by the precious blood of Jesus, by His death and His resurrection. We access heaven, not because of our own ability, but because of God's ability. So that's already settled. It's God who's worked in us, who is working in us. So our job is to work it out. And so I like you know, the motives here, right? So God said, Paul says about God, so he's working in you both to will, in other words, it's his desire, and to work, it's his action for his good pleasure. God is not angry or shamed about you or me because of the misshapen dimensions of our life. God is working in us and it's his plan and it's his great joy to reshape us into the people that he's called us to be. So there's no shame for that. So, so there's that desire, there's the good pleasure that God's working on the inside of you. Even in yours and my very worst day, God is still in his good pleasure working on the inside of us. That's good news, isn't it? But so work it out. But then Paul says, so you guys, you, us, we need to work it out. What's on the inside, the new nature that God's put on the inside of us, that, that He's created us, the, the power of the Spirit on the inside. Now we're to work that out from the inside out into our thoughts and our actions and our beliefs and our behaviours and our relationships. Work it out. And He says, with fear and trembling. What I think that means, at least, is to say, take it seriously. Don't just let it slide, let things slide. Work out your salvation. Take your healing journey and your pursuit of wholeness seriously so that we can live in His love, in His joy and in His peace and be all that He's called us to be. So you could say, and I'm gonna say it right now, that pursuing wholeness, especially our ability to return to joy, is a top priority for our lives. Pursuing God's purpose and, and His desire for us is, and, and which is partly in wholeness, is our priority, our top mandate, if you like. Because there's a very big difference, well, there is a very big difference between knowing about God and, and having a history of reading the Bible and, and you know, having, in a sense, some things that we might look at and go, oh, they're mature because they can quote Scripture. There's a very big difference between that level of maturity and the maturity of our relationships into person, one person to another person. I can be very, very knowledgeable about, about Scripture, but if I can't love my wife, I'm actually immature. If I can quote scripture and pray for people and, and see God move, but I actually don't live in joy and when something happens, I freak out and run around like for three weeks, not sure what to do. I've got some maturity to work on, right? How, so here's my question to each of us. How about you? How long does it take for you to return to joy? If somebody pushes your buttons, if something bad happens, Maybe you get a letter in the mail, you hear some bad news, you get an email, you hear, have an interaction with somebody, a random stranger cuts you off in the street and the, you know, when you're driving, how quickly do you return to joy? How long do you get stuck in that emotion? Father wants to straighten us out and there's no shame in it whatsoever. So how does he do that? Well, he does that through partnership. Everything that God does for some amazing reason he chooses to partner with us for. So in our partnership with God, there's three things that I think have been key in my own life and as key in our lives, I believe. One is that we encounter God and we have a lifestyle of that. Two is that we have authentic relationships. And three is that we develop rhythms in our life where we learn and practice these skills. So let me just very quickly, as we wrap up, unpack these. God encounters. You know, I love gathering together corporately. I love it, um, just those moments like we had today of, of worship. I, I remember when I was working in Australia for KPMG, some days working 70, 80 hours, some weeks working 70, 80 hours a week, and I literally dragged myself into the Sunday service 
And um, in that moment of worship, somewhere in worship, as my eyes got off my circumstances and my eyes went up onto Jesus, I suddenly had a whole perspective. I felt his energy and joy came back into me and I was able to just, you know, be, you know, in that moment full of energy, full of joy and, and not just, you know, lifeless and tired. Because it was a moment of corporate encounter that I participated in that helped me experience God. I love those Sunday services that can happen here. It can happen in a connect group. It can happen in a transformation weekend. That's why we love to run transformation weekends is because we want everybody to encounter God because we know when we encounter God, we change and we become like Him. But one of the things that we want to make sure is that we learn how to steward that encounter and how to develop our own ongoing encounter so that we don't live from conference to conference or Sunday to Sunday or connect group to connect group, but we actually learn how to encounter God for ourselves and experience His presence and enjoy being with Him and let those encounters become springboards for other encounters. So God desires for you and I to experience Him and to know Him are you doing that? Are you experiencing and enjoying Him? Then I'll come back to the disciplines of, for my own life of some of the things that I'm doing to help that for me. The secondly, second thing to talk about is God, you know, to help us be reshaped and formed that God wants to bring us into authentic relationships. What is it, my authentic? Well, to me, an authentic relationship is one where I can be myself with you and in my presence, you can be yourself with me. There's a two-way flow of love and joy and rest and ideas and support and strength where I can be known, but I can also know, where I can learn to ask for help from you and receive help from you. Where I can learn to love and then be loved, where I can learn the truth and I can learn how it works in your life where I can be open and vulnerable and transparent. That's an authentic relationship. It's a two-way flow and it's especially important if, like the tree, you've grown off because you didn't receive all the good things that you needed. It's in those moments where God brings us into relationship with others where we actually receive, if we haven't received unconditional love, we can learn to receive unconditional love from a human that actually makes a difference in our lives. It's authentic community. It's one of the reasons why we encourage connect groups and other forms of, of, of belonging and connecting and, and because we want everybody to know somebody. In a community of this size, everybody can't know everybody, but everybody can know somebody. And, that, and the desire isn't just that it would be in a, in a, you know, a, a passing high, how are you, part of the mask that Ash was talking about, is actually learning to be able to let that down and have an authentic relationship that says, this is me. This is who I am. If you can't find that, pray and ask the Lord for direction and, and opening and, and connection and authentic relationships. Finally, the developing rhythms in our lives. For me, developing rhythms have been really, really important in learning how to steward what God's doing in me, to create room for what God's doing in me, to partner with the Holy Spirit so that I can, be, I can grow into all that He's called me to be. And for me, that looks like getting up and reading the Bible in the morning. Now, it doesn't have to be first thing for you. This is not a formula. This is just some things that have worked for me. It's like, it's for me sitting in silence before the Lord or, or soaking to some worship in His presence. It's journaling and writing out what God's speaking to me. It's, it's worship and singing. It's praying the Abba prayers that I taught you maybe four weeks ago. Um, and it's the purpose of that discipline isn't for the sake of look at me, I'm good. It's to experience the delight of God. I love what Mel said a few weeks ago. We moved from duty to discipline to delight. And, his de and the desire is that we would encounter Jesus and respond to His voice. For me, it also looks like deliberately practicing appreciation. If the more I learn that skill, the more when I'm actually upset with Ash, I can find a way back to appreciate all the things that I actually know are good about her even if it's with gritted teeth. It doesn't stay with gritted teeth for very long, mind you, because the very act of appreciation turns my relational circuits back on and helps me to actually reconnect with Ash. I have to learn that discipline. If I had time, I would tell you a 
story I probably already shared with you about uh, that. Anyway, we'll move on. The other thing that's been working for me is that I've been learning to ex identify and express my emotions. Tuning into what's going on on the inside of me is invaluable for me to be able to understand what's happening and then partner with the Holy Spirit. So rather than getting locked into a cycle of fear or loneliness or anxiety or guilt or shame, if I'm able to express that to Ash, it unlocks that cycle and releases grace into my life. So I'm learning how to identify and express my emotions to tune in what's happening with me, acknowledge my need, and then allow the Holy Spirit, either through Ash or directly through to, him, to me or through others, to, to give me comfort. This is a, just a discipline of building in, of expressing my emotion, of learning how, what's going on on the inside of me. Because I came from my background through all my years means that I haven't been very good at that. And the, other, the final thing that the Holy Spirit's really been working with me on in the last little while is to know where I have my weaknesses and I'm aware of those weaknesses. I'm learning to remind myself that I have the Spirit of God, the power of heaven on the inside, and I can actually say to that situation, that is subject to change. It's not my eternal destiny, it's not my battle. God's put His power within me. So if I'm struggling with fear or inadequacy, I can say, that might be true, but it's subject to change. God can do anything. And I'm putting my hope and my trust and my faith looking at Him. And all those things, learning to have God encounters, pursuing God encounters. Sometimes I've actually gone for heart healing and ministry to receive that encounter and help get over some issues. But learning how to then practice authenticity in my relationships and learning the rhythms and the disciplines of life to help me um, grow in those skills is all teaching me how to learn to return to joy more quickly. And the good news is, bar a very few minor exceptions, I generally don't get stuck in those things for more than an hour or so before I come out of it. Whereas in the past, it might have taken me three days. And that wasn't very fun for Ash or my kids. Maybe it's because I don't have my kids around. That's why I've become so good at it. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking, I'm messing. It's gone out online, I take it all back, it's too late, it's gone. I love my children, if you're watching, I love you all, you're amazing. Okay, so take a moment, let me dig myself out of that hole really quickly. Take a moment to think about your own life. How do you, how quickly do you return to joy? Do you have certain relationships that are grounded in fear rather than joy? and therefore bring you anxiety? If so, what healing do you need to pursue? Another question. Do you have authentic relationships that give life to you and you give life to others? If not, what are you gonna do about it? I suggest praying to the Lord and asking for that. Have you built consistent practices in your life that anchor you into the reality of who God is? Are you doing what you know you already need to do? Or are you letting things slide? What new habits can you build into your life to become more whole, to connect with Jesus more, and to return to joy more quickly? Do you need a new habit? What relationships do you have that you could invest in to make more authentic? And finally, are you managing your time and your energy well towards wholeness? Or are you spending your time running around stuck in your emotions? If you are, it's okay, but there's more for us. The Father wants to bring us into His joy and to build us into His maturity. So I wanna invite you to stand if you would. Just take a moment to, to thank God for His joy, for the fact that He is full of joy, that He's joy towards us, 
and that he's happy to be with us. Take a moment just to, just to um, do some appreciation. Father, thank you for your joy. Thank you that you are happy to be with us, that you dwell within us. You love to fill us with the fullness of your joy. I thank you that you desire to work in us, to make us all that you've called us to be. Now just take a moment and just say, Lord, I wanna be all that you've called me to be. I wanna fulfill your purpose and I wanna live my life in such a way that it's, it's the, 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 the best way that you have for me. Just talk to the Lord about that. Ask Him to encounter you, to fill you with His joy afresh. Ask Him to bring you into deeper, authentic relationships with other people. And ask Him to build that discipline into your own life. Father, I bless everybody that's here, that's in the sound of my voice or watching online or whatever time. We bless them to encounter and experience more of God. We bless you to be, to come alive to His presence and to enjoy His pleasures and to live in joy, inexpressible, full of glory. And we bless you to, to walk in intimacy and deep, authentic relationships for the Father to release those to you if you need them. I bless you in Jesus' name to be anchored into community and a place of belonging. And I bless you to, dis, to, to discipline yourself, to do what God, the Father's calling you to do, to build in discipline into your life that you and I would become more and more mature and whole and all that the Father has created us to be and intended us to be in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mari. So good. Fantastic. Okay, so we're going to wrap up the meeting, but we have plenty of time and space for ministry. We have a ministry team. If you would like to respond and get a little bit more prayer for anything that Murray shared about, or you need healing in your body or whatever, you can come forward now and we'll have a ministry team here to pray for you. I want to encourage you, if you want to find out any more information about what's happening in church life or you want to get plugged into a team, then you can go to the Connection Centre, which is through the glass doors. If you are, uh, if this is your first time, please come and say hello at, in that, in, through the glass doors and we have a gift for you. Be blessed, have a wonderful week and we will see you next time. Go in the joy and the power of the Holy Spirit. Bless you. So as we were preparing and praying into the conference theme for this year, we really felt the passage out of John where Jesus says, I give you peace. And then He says, I'm sending you into the world and be filled with the Holy Spirit. He breathes on them to go in the power of the Holy Spirit. capture the heart of God, to be sent as Jesus was sent, sent by the Spirit, sent carrying peace, sent with His love. We really need to receive more of the Holy Spirit. We're hungry for more of Him. We are the sent ones.